day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So glad that you're able to join us on Speak the Word. I pray that all is well and God has continued blessing you. As we come together to study the Word, we pray that we may learn practical application, that we may go forth and be what God wants us to be. If you are blessed by this channel, please take the time to subscribe and hit the like button. You can find me on YouTube, also on Facebook. The following, the information will be given right after this clip, but I pray that you will take the time not only to walk with me as we go to, through the word, but also invite others that we may grow as a community. Because in times like this, we as the saints of God need to stand strong and be firm in the Lord that we may go forth and be what God wants us to be. As we go forward, remember to speak the word. Next, we will have our summary, getting ready for our next election, and then we will hear the word as we go forth and lifting up the name of Jesus. See you in a moment. Thought for the week. One Sunday morning we was in Sunday school and one of the deacon expressed that he had a co-worker on his job that constantly caused problems with what he was doing. Every time he turned around he would seem seamlessly be working against him. And as he began to rationalize, began to figure out, he began to think that and he mentioned this notion. He said, there are some people in our lives that the devil had placed there in order to call chaos, cause problems in our lives. Now, as we deal with these individuals, deal with these situations, God looks at our character and how we handle things. Yes, you might have the same problem with a coworker, a friend, a church member, even a family member, that maybe every time that you try to do good, they are there to pounce on your head. But as we begin to look in today's lesson, we begin to notice that God expects us to maintain our character in the midst of dealing with those that may not see things the way that we want them to be. So therefore, my challenge is to you, identify those individuals, identify those situations that you recognize as evil, and then also check yourself on how you handle those situations and handle those individuals as we go through the lesson today. 
The lesson today will be, don't be overcome by evil. We'll be coming from um, Romans, the 12th chapter. We read from verse um, 14, 15, 16, 17, excuse me, verse 17 through 21. And then when we return, begin to evaluate yourself and see how you measure up in this chapter. As we listen to the selection, let us praise God and, and just be blessed that God has allowed us to see another day. And we'll be back in just a moment with the word. you were blessed by the selection and I pray that you took time to give God just a moment of praise because he is worthy to be praised. We will go immediately into the scripture which will be found in Romans the 12th chapter um, verses 17, 17 through 21 and it reads as follows, it recompense to no man evil for evil and provide things honest in right sight of all men 
if it's possible, as much as it lie in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay thus, says the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsty, give him drink. For it is so doing that thou shalt shall shall heaps of coal of fire on his head. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May God add a blessing upon the reading of his word. I read to you Romans 12, chapter verses 17 through 21. And I would like to speak to you on the subject of don't be overcome by evil. Don't be overcome by evil. As we are now facing uh, the change in 2001, how that the pandemic, uh, those who are coming out, those who are now who have been locked up in about a year's over a year's time, are uh, now begin to move about and seem like we are temp somewhat moving back to normalcy. We find that we are dealing with people who have attitude, people who are upset, people who are angry. People who are frustrated for a number of reasons, but they are venting themselves um, out in open. They are not holding back. They are releasing their frustration out at, at any moment, at any time. Um, there have been an increase of incidents on flights where there, um, people who are getting upset and, and having to be kicked off flight. There are incidents we are beginning to see. Um, crime going up. We begin to see where people are being killed for altercation. We are seeing uh, mass shootings that are going on in our malls and in our neighborhoods that are going on. And these are evidence of the time that the devil has reigned, even in the midst of all that we have just been through. The devil seems to be letting the world know that he still have a hold and he still have control on the world. But we as Christians must do as Matthew the fifth chapter, which still tells us that we must let our light shine in the midst of all that we are going on. In this book of Romans, Paul, the author of this book, he began in this 12th chapter, he began to go through a series of steps of how to live holy. Holy is just being uh, living a life of set apart, uh, one that uh, a life that is committed to pleasing God and giving him the praise in our everyday life. He opened up in verse 1 and 2. He opened up as speaking to the individual that we are a living sacrifice. No, we are not dead. We are a living sacrifice, which means that we are holy and acceptable unto him. And therefore, our lives should dictate. And sometimes that's hard to do when... You have people who are working against you, people who are fighting you, and people who seem not to be there for your best interests. Uh, he goes on and he began to put things in the spectrum because he began after he talks about um, letting your light, now I mean, being a living sacrifice and living holy and acceptable and reason. He began to talk about the mind, how we should not be conformed to this world. We shouldn't allow ourselves to get caught up and worldly issues. We shouldn't allow the world to dictate our character because God should uh, judge us according to our action and not the other individual that we're dealing with. And so therefore, we must give an account for how we think, how we walk, how we talk in our lives. And it goes on to say that we, starting with the mind, that our mind should not be uh, uh, confound to the word, to the world, but it should be transformed by the renewing of our mind that when we confess Christ as our personal Savior, 
then we begin to have a new outlook in life. We begin to see things different. We begin to live a life that is worthy of him. Yes, we are human. Yes, we do get upset. But in the midst of all that's going on, God keep us by us making sure that we live in a life that is holy and acceptable for the reasonable sort uh, service unto him that we are to lift up a standard of praise in our life daily that God can get the glory when others see us. Yes, of course, there are times you're being pushed. You want to lay down your religion and you want to uh, retaliate. You want to give people a piece of your mind. You want to let people know that you're not a pushover. You want to let these things know. But God tells us that we need to live a life that's worthy of him. He goes on and put things in a larger um, perspective. He goes on to say that we're part of the same body. And he began to associate the, the body of Christ as the human body, that each part of the body has a function and each part of the body uh, has a duty, has a role. But in the midst of it, we are all connected together. If you don't believe me, if you stomp your toe, watch the reaction of your body as the frowns come upon your face, as you stoop down and your hands move down, as you cry out in pain, and as and, and sometimes it's hard enough, other parts of your body will hurt along with that body. I once had an incident where I was cleaning out a washer at work and the cat walk, walk collapsed and uh, my leg fell in some boiling water. And, and it burnt my ankle because I had work boots on. It protected my feet, but it burned my ankle. And I remember sitting there, as I was sitting there, not only did my ankle hurt, but my whole leg hurt. Pain uh, it, uh, just went through my whole leg as I sat there and suffered, even though the only damaged part was my ankle. When we are part of the body of Christ, when one go through, we all go through. But yet again, when one receive blessing, when one is doing good, we all to be, we all should be praising and be thankful and 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 celebrate with that individual, not grudgingly, but just to realize that that's a part of the body. And and if a blessing coming to them, guess what? It's coming to you also. Then he begins to deal with those in the body of Christ. And strangely enough, when you research the scripture, you begin to break it down. You will recognize that at the portion that he's dealing with, dealing with the saints, your brother in, the, in Christ, that he spend more time dealing with that relationship than actually with the world. There are more things he put there for dealing with the saints because the reason is that the devil uses the things that are close to you. He used the things that are common. He used the thing that you uh, that you entrusted. Many a time, people have been uh, um, have have lost their faith in church because they 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 gave their secrets to someone in church and somebody turned around and used against them. There are people that are hurting because of family member who have abused them and misused them because. In that situation, we let our guard down and therefore those people use the opportunity to hurt us. But God tells us even though they have done wrong to us, we still need to maintain our character. He tells us that we shouldn't be vain. We shouldn't be uh, 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 arrogant. We shouldn't, we, we shouldn't go around thinking more of the rich and mistreating the poor. It tells us that we need to celebrate. We need to be an uh, 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 instrument of service, not for personal gain, but that God may get the glory. It goes on in, this, in, in those verses and tells us how that we should be toward one another in the body of Christ. But now we get down to uh, verse 17 and uh, uh, through 21. He begins to deal with those who are outside of Christ. And some made me even say, as the scripture put, our enemy. He goes on, he pulls out a few things, about seven things that we need to make sure that we need to do as we are dealing with those who are coming against us, those who are, do not see things the way we do. First thing they said, we should not render evil for evil. Because someone do, does you wrong, do not give you the right in God's eyesight to do wrong back to them. 
You know how we were when we, we was kids growing up. They did it, so I did it. No, God says you are responsible for your own action, especially now that you hear the word of God, that you should not render evil um, unto evil. And we ought to be honest in the sight of all, all men, that we should be truthful and what they see, we need to be real. Matter of fact, in the previous version when he talked about he, he went on to tell them that the love that you have need to be a real and genuine love. And so therefore, somehow, some way, we have to learn how to genuine love even our enemies in the midst of this walk that we call life. Yes, uh, yes, it's hard to do. Yes, it's, it's difficult to do. But when you have the love of Christ, see, you understand that the love of Christ is not because of, but in spite of. God loved us not because of who we are, not because of what we have done. He loved us in spite of who we are because we all have sinned and short and come short of the glory of God. He loved us in spite of, uh, of who we are because we all have done things against God. He loved us in spite of because even on the cross when they cried out crucify him and he died on the cross, yet he still loved us enough to die on the cross for our sins. So if he can die for us, we need to have that type of love for our brother man. He goes on, he said, we ought to live peaceably with all men if possible. Yes, there are going to be some people that you cannot get along with, but sometimes you got to agree that you disagree. But we ought to live peaceably when it's all said and done and the dust is settled. You should be able to find peace with that individual. A lot of times our biggest mistake is that we react to the reaction of the individual instead of setting the tone. In that fifth chapter of Matthew, I mentioned that we are to be the light. It also tells us that we are the salt. Salt is a season. Salt is something that brings out the flavor that makes things good. That when you have the right amount of salt in the food, it brings out the flavor. I know that in today's too much salt is not good for you, but when you have the right amount of salt, matter of fact, if you have food and you don't have enough salt, sometimes it can cause mental problems. So you have to have the right amount of salt in you. And that's what we as Christians, we got to have the right amount of seasonings that we can live peaceably, that we can uh, 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 live in a way that people can, that God can get the glory in our lives. Now, 19, we often misquote this scripture, but he, it goes on to say, Dear the beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather uh, give um, unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I shall repay, thus say the Lord. We often quote that in that B clause, we do the first part of the B clause, vengeance is mine. And that's not what that scripture is saying. It's that vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. In other words, what I'm saying that we as Christians have to learn how to step back and stop being little Jesus and step back. And when God get ready to zap those or deal with our enemies, we need to make sure we are out the way. That if we are living the life and we are the example, that when God get ready to correct those individuals and deal with those individuals, then he can set them right. I'm reminded of a story. I'm reminded of an incident in my life when I was working in, in uh, one of my first jobs and I had dealt with one supervisor. And I was the lead person. I dealt with one supervisor and we had a very good relationship, right? We could work things out and make things happen. In fact, we was uh, out of the three shifts, we was the top producer in the production. And everybody wondered how we was able to do what we were able to do. But we had we had that communication. We had that Quran. We had that chemistry that we, we could work together. Uh, he left the company and I ended up with another supervisor. And the atmosphere changed. This young man did not see things the same way this other gentleman do, did. A lot of times he'd come up with suggestions and I would try to help him by telling him what was good and what was not. And he would go try them and they would fail. And we, we got to the point that we were battling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I was a young man and I have not matured to where I'm at now. It got to the point that we were argue from the time that I walked in the door to the time we leave. I, I remember one day I felt dizzy and I, 
and I went to the doctor and found like I, I, I was suffering from high blood pressure because the stress of that job of going in and dreading going in and dealing with him day in and day off. And I find myself even being uncharacteristic of myself. We, at one point, I even lost my cool and threw a, one of the uh, parts of the line at him and missed him. But and, and, and Lord fixed it that nothing happened in that situation. And finally, I got to a point, I said, that's enough. I'm going to give up. And so this one particular day, he walked in and told me, and we, we had our discussion. We had our disagreement. He said, that's it. You're not the lead man no more. I told him, it's fine. He said, when you come in tomorrow, you load the line. I said, that's perfectly fine with me. The next day, I came in. I asked him, I said, we still, I'm still loading the line? He said, yes, you still loading the line. I said, that's fine with me. And I went back there, and I started loading the line. And I must admit, that was the best time of loading the line that I ever had. The work was back there. We talked and we shared. We set up a system and the job was easy. No matter how much he tried to turn up, turn the speed of the line up, we had a system that worked. And, it was, and we worked as a team and everything was going fine. But yet, on the other side of the wall, the rest of the wall, it was trouble all the way through the line. And he would walk by and he will look at me and I reply, I'm just a line loader. I'm not the lead man today. And I kept doing it. Finally, he came and he, he, he asked me to go to the break room. For about 45 minutes, we, we sat down in discussion of, of, I need you to be the lead man again. I need you to take your place again. And finally, I told him I would take it again. But what happened was that after I took that time, after God dealt with him just that one day, our relationship changed. I could walk up and he would say when I, I speak my opinion, he said good. And a lot of times he would listen and follow because he realized I knew what I was doing. Yes, vengeance is mine. I should repay. Thus said the Lord means that we got to step back and do what God wants us to do. And also, we, and also it means that we can't get caught up in being evil because then... That means that God not only have to zap our enemies, but he got to zap you too. You got to be disciplined for doing wrong also. So the best thing to do is make sure you do right. That when God begin to pass out judgment, that, he, that it won't fall on you. He goes on to tell us, and this is hard. He said, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. Well, why should I do this? Look at the, the B clause in this verse. Why should I feed my enemies when they're hungry? Why should I give them a drink? I know that feeding them and, and quenching their thirst is going to bring pain and sorrow because they are constantly at me. The B clause in it said, when you do this and your enemy know that you know that you're doing wrong, then it's like heaps of coal that put upon their lips, it heaps of cold upon their head, and therefore it, it bothers them. It, 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 it kind of make them upset because they know that you know, but yet you are willing to do what God wants you to do. If you really want to see, a lot of times we fight in the physical realm, but God is calling us to fight in the spiritual realm by showing love in the midst of Because the last verse brings it out. It said, be not overcome by evil but be but overcome evil with good and that's the key of winning over individuals is that we got to learn how to we got to let the God side the spirit side the spirit of God reign in us that when people do us wrong we still show love even though they try to step on us we still show love yes uh, uh, yes, we're in a time we're dealing with social injustice. Yes, we're dealing with time where we're dealing with backbiting and different things. But if we exercise the love of God and we use the wisdom of God to fight these battles, God will fight our battle. If we hold our peace and let the Lord fight our back battles, victory shall be ours. <coughs> Now, what I'm saying, I'm not saying that we need to just sit down and just do nothing. But as God lead us, then we move when he say move. Then we talk the way he want us to talk. 
and we live most of all the way he want, want us to live, that God may get the glory. Paul was one that uh, exercised this, but there were times that Paul had to stand up and he had to declare in the face of those that was against him that God is able and God delivered Paul time after time to finally his work is done. And the good news is that when our work is done and we have lived the life that Paul had described in this chapter, then we'll be on that great awakening day. We'll be on that day where we can shout hallelujah. We'll be in a place where we'll be in the glory of the Lord. We'll be in new bodies where we don't have to worry about suffering, pain, sickness no more. We'll be in a glorified body where we can live eternally and we will be in the presence of the Lord. But we have to learn how to apply Romans the 12th chapter in our lives. I encourage you to be a living sacrifice in spite of all situation at all time that God can get the glory. Don't be overcome by evil. But I challenge you today to overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now giving you the praise and honor. We come thank you, Father, for being so good and so awesome in our lives. We come, Father, realize it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here. So we honor and bless your name because you are awesome, God. You're wonderful, Counselor, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, as we are going throughout this week, Father, let us identify the evil ones in our lives. Let us identify those that are there to encourage us and to strengthen us. Let us identify the, 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 the misfortune, the weakness in our lives. And let us identify that you are the source of our strength that we may go day by day. Let us, Father, take each day, day by day, that we start off our day in worship and praise. Let us begin to walk by faith and not by sight. And Father, we pray right now in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this social injustice, in the midst of this world crisis, in the midst of wars that are going on, Father, that your peace may reign, Father, that the, the saints of God may begin to stand up and let the world know that you still live. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus as we go forth, Father, that we may be living example, Father. We pray for the front line worker, Father, as things are seen to get better, that you would give them strength. We pray for those who are returning back to the house of God, Father, that they may come with a worshiping spirit, that you may get the glory. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for that sinner man, woman, boy, girl, that do not know you in the free pardon of sin, that they may yield and surrender their life unto you. Father, we just love you and we bless your name because you've been so good to us. Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long ways. And Father, we just give you the glory. We pray this prayer in thy son Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, please fill it up. 